You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. This is not nothing new. All right, this time the video's gone about, but this is what I do. Do you know what I mean? I rob people that can't, I can't go to prison for that. I can't get nicked for robbing a drug dealer, robbing the bad guys. They can't ring the police and go, Danny just robbed me. Then I got another phone call saying, oh, you've done him. And I said, yeah. Oh, no, no, don't say you've done him, don't say you've done him. I said, for why? I'm not gonna, I'm not a coward, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, but he, he said it on the phone call before that you didn't do him. So you could just say, well, nah, the driver's done it or something like that. I said, fuck that, I'll tell him I've done him, bruv. How much do you think you've bumped off people? This year? Yeah. Over half a million pound. What? Le easy, easy, easy. The bullet hit the headrest. Like literally, like no joke, hit the headrest. After it happened, we pulled over. And we was like, where the fuck's that? And we was looking around the car, looking for the bullet. And then bruv, my brother turned and went, it's there. And I said, where? He went, in your fucking headrest, mate. So we was in a warrior Jeep and it come through the back cab window through that back back passenger window and then jammed in my headrest. I will do everyone to their dog, their nan, the lot, and I will find them. Like they would not be, they would never get away with that, ever. I will make it my life mission. Boom, man on. Today's guest, we've got Danny Simpson. How are you, brother? What's happening, bro? Good to see you, Danny. I'm good. You? I've had countless messages, mate. Videos, WhatsApp groups messaging me. Need to get Danny on. I was like, who the fuck's Danny? <laughs> Looked at fuck's um, Danny? all these videos, calling people. I think you've shouting, you've bumped everybody from every corner of the city or the country <laughs> or the, the world, basically. <laughs> and then I seen a video with people saying it was your dad getting murdered. Mm. Some heavy stuff. Yeah. It's not schoolboy stuff. Yeah. This is probably the first interview I've ever contemplated wearing a bulletproof vest. <laughs> it's, um, but everybody's got a story and it would be good to understand what all the videos are about, your own life and all the shit. How are you dealing with it, first of all? Yeah, dealing with it all right. I just don't really care. It's just, it is what it is, isn't it? It's another, another day, another story, another chapter in the book. It's nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so obviously saying all the messages message you to get you on hear your story mm. give people a better understanding who you are what you do because your your face is everywhere now you're everybody's talking about it it can become weird but you're still getting hassled off the coppers and shit yeah but no not really at the moment no. I think they really want someone to do me that's when you start questioning <laughs> though when they're not looking at you bothering you trust me I always go back to the start of my guest Danny yeah. where you grew up and how it all began uh, literally pick them like down the road and yeah, grew up in a council estate with me and my bro two brothers and my mum and dad. How was your upbringing? Um, tough, but fair. Yeah. As anyone would, really. So I watched one days. of your videos and obviously you've been through the shit as well mm. and out of prison your whole life, battling constantly. I know you struggle with mental health. Yeah, bad. Yeah. So what age did that start? Um, from that age of like 25 upwards, when I started getting fat, really. <laughs> Join the club, mate. I know how it feels. <laughs> Yeah, but literally, just nah, just this crazy. Like even the other day, I had a breakdown. Like bad. I just sometimes I just can't cope. I just it's too much going on. It's too, and I just literally just yeah, have a mad mad nervous breakdown. But that's all the outside noise as well. All the pressure. No matter how tough we can portray ourselves, no matter how we can say we don't give a fuck, mm. we all do. Because yeah, back definitely. in the day, it was all tribalism. You've got a small tribe. Mm. You've only got maybe people's 10 or 20 people's opinions mm, yeah. it's not as painful but when you've got thousands of people watching your stuff or millions of people everybody has an opinion everyone has something to say yeah and it can be draining mentally and physically on mm. your mental health we'll go right through your younger years first Danny when was the first time you got in trouble um, I was 15 in Peckham Nick Mom's car crashed it and then yeah she got me nicked and yeah, that was the first encounter well, first how, you get, how you get treated at school because I know it was like Jamie Oliver was coming in and you got told yeah yeah, I got told I couldn't be there because he was bringing in school dinners and I was the destructive, naughty one. You always allowed one in the class? Yeah, bad. Like, yeah. If anything was going on in the school, I had to be expelled or sent away or sent to the detention room while the inspector had come around, just so I weren't in the classrooms. How did that affect you? Um, I don't know, really. 
I just think it's made me worse. <laughs> <laughs> just because you, you, then you just you're doing it on purpose. Then do you know what I mean? Because you you're rebel? getting the attention, so yeah. you're just doing it more. Did you rebel more then? Yeah, definitely, one hundred percent. Because then I jump out the window in the detention room and then try and run to the classroom, and then the headmaster chasing me. Yeah, it was a bit crazy. <laughs> what about was the first time you went to prison? Um, two thousand five, Huntercombe. That was quite a big, big shock. How was that experience? Was that why yours? Yeah, YOs that was. That was, um, yeah, the experience was all right because you, when in the YOs, everyone's young, everyone's the same age, we all like the same stuff football, boxing, table tennis, pool. So it was, yeah, it was all right. Everyone was like, it was like a youth centre, YO wise. The guys weren't really on you that much. When you get out, was it just constantly straight back yeah, in? Yeah, straight back in. Assaults on police, uh, driving while disqualified, dangerous driving, yeah, just constantly. Like a revolving door. It got that bad, the prison officer said, we've got a bed for you. We'll mm. keep the bed. Even when I went to Belmarsh, like, we keep the bed for you. Keep the bed warm. How Simply does that blank. make you feel, though, that constantly going back? Just, oh, just it, that's, that's depressing as well, because, like, let me live my life, do you know what I mean? All right, I do stupid shit, but I don't do shit for the attention that you're giving me, the, the way you're coming to nick me, do you know what I mean? Like, let me just be normal, try and live my life. I'll grow out of it. And they weren't letting it. They were just always there at my door. But you must have gave them reasons also. Yeah, of course, definitely. I was acting, back then, I was acting like a scumbag. I was doing bad stuff. But, yeah, you live and you learn, eh? Yeah, I don't know if you're learning yet, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're learning, mate. Is, um, younger years, into your 20s, yeah. how was life? When you started getting more serious stuff? Um, yeah, I started doing, obviously, like, we was doing mad stuff, like crazy, like arm robberies and things like that. And then just kind of, all my mates got nicked, took off the street. And then I remember I was at court for my brother and then the soccer police officer turned around and went, Danny, you're the last one, we will get you. And I walked out of court that day and I said, never again will I do a robbery. And since that day, 2013, I've never done a robbery. Well, yeah, the, jet, anyway. <laughs> the government robberies. Yeah. <laughs> So how's, how, how are you dealing with, it all, with all those videos and shit coming out just now? And I just don't about, care. Yeah. I just, literally, it's, the positive ones I like, but the negative ones, I just don't care. If they, you want to put negative videos to get a bit of few views or whatever, crack on, good luck. It don't bother me because a boy's going to see it and think, oh, he looks interesting, let me follow him. Or a girl's going to look and think, oh, he's hot, let me follow. Like it's, You're just putting more attention to me. So I don't really care. Did you realise how big those videos would have been? Did you know what? Well, if, I'm, if I'm not that big, they would have been. I'd have videoed it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But no, nah, yeah, no, nah, I didn't know about the videos. It was literally next morning I got sent. I think I woke up, my phone was just going insane. And I was like, what the fuck's all this? And I was watching it. I was like, this geezer really videoed me. And I'm going through it, going through it. I'm like, bro, he's mad. And then WhatsApp just went insane. My WhatsApp just went completely mad. Everyone sending, like, 14 pictures and videos at a time I was like wow was people close to you that feared for your life or anything because the videos obviously you've said look I bump people from Liverpool London Scotland mm. Ireland my bro old brother panics a bit he's a bit of a panicker he's stuck in starts sound about picking up and selling his ass and moving away and, yeah just gay shit but <laughs> other than that yeah like no no one else how was your life before at all just a few weeks ago. It's the same, ago. same stuff. Mm. Like, this is not, nothing new. All right, this time the video's gone about, but this is what I do. Do you know what I mean? I rob people that can't, I can't go to prison for now. I can't get nicked for robbing a drug dealer, robbing the bad guys. They can't ring the police and go, Danny just robbed me. All they can do is nothing. Nothing. <laughs> do you worry about the consequences though? Because obviously it always comes back and beats you in the ass. Yeah, but does it really? In 1992, yes. In 1999, yes. We're in 2021. What can bite you in the arse other than the police? Nothing. No one's going to do anything. No one wants to go to jail. No one wants to be locked up. No one wants to be associated to nothing bad. Everyone wants to try and be legit now. So no one's going to do nothing. It's as simple as that. But when people, if it's not five grand, ten grand, it's kind of okay. But mm. when it starts going into the six figure, mm. then it's a different ball game. It's a different ball game because that's what, how we think because we've all been brought up we're all at a certain age now from what it used to be back in the day. If you rob that man for 10 grand, I guarantee you someone's on your doorstep the next day. It's not that no more. I do it every week. It's not that. 
Do you feel invincible you, now? Not even, I'm not invincible because I'm not the baddest man on the planet. Anyone could do anything. He could get up and do me now. You could get up and do me now. Anyone could do anything. It is what it is. You have your life, my sell by date, and it is what I'll just live every day to the fullest. It is what it is. What did your family and friends say to that? I don't really talk to my family. Why? <laughs> um, just because, literally, I just fell out of them all, really. Like, Politics. No, I fell out my mum because of my dad, because obviously my dad just beat my mum up, and I, obviously when I got to a certain age, I fucking every time he touched her, I'd fucking wallop him. And then um, she wanted to get back of him, so then basically he brainwashed her to, to stop talking to me, so then he could control her and bully her and do that shit to her life again. Manipulate her? Yeah, manipulate her, basically. So what about your brothers and sisters? Um, my little brother, he just, he's a lost cause, like literally trying to help him every time and he ends up just stabbing your back, robbing you for penance. My older brother, he just, um, he done a like, he said, I rang him up the other week to do a bedroom for my baby mum, for my little girl. And he's a builder and he told me if he's got time or he can fit me in. That's not a bro, like you meant to be my brother. So I'm not telling him you can go fuck yourself as well. Do so I feel lonely? And no, I don't. I feel more, less... Pre- I, my phone don't ring. I block everyone on my WhatsApp. I don't talk to... I think I've got five numbers on my WhatsApp. I don't talk to... I don't... I'm good. I don't need to. I don't need to read their shit. They're bullshit. It's clearly just bullshit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Many times you've been in prison? How many times? <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, over 20, 30 times. Easy. I, I, I remember in 2014... Me and my solicitor added it up. I'd done 18 months on remand for things I didn't even do. Like, I, they put me on remand. Six months later, I get found not guilty. Released. I've just done six months of prison. Then again. Then again. And that was in 2013, 14. When was the last time you were in? Um, they recalled me for taking my girlfriend to Paris last February. Cause just because I took her to Paris and I was on license, I went for four days. They recalled me for five months. What were you on license for? Um, a burglary from 2015. So six years ago? Yeah, literally. How is that? Because there's a video going about as well with you, the armed response around you. I went in a helicopter on it. Yeah. yeah, what was that about? Literally, me and my mates went up to um, Novikov and then my mate curbed my wheel. So I had a row of him. He ended up getting in the cab fucking off. Me and my other mate went into Novikov. We come out. The doorman said to me, oh, police have been circling your car. I said, for what? So we got in the car, drove off. As we drove off, went down the road, and we got pulled over by about ten police cars, two, three armed police, helicopter. And I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" There? But obviously, I was drunk and just chatted a bit of shit. Drunk driving? No, I wasn't even driving. That's what I'm saying. I was in the passenger seat, mm-hmm. and then obviously they got out of the cars and just started. Yeah, I was a bit drunk and started. Letting Did they loose. take all your watches and shit off you, which you all got back? No, that one that time. That was another mm-hmm. time. Like so, that time. Do you want to know about that time? Yeah, yeah. So that time with the watches and stuff. Um, Allegedly, I was in a Lamborghini Jeep in Bixieve and the police tried to stop the car. The Lamborghini Jeep was uh, reversed. The police had gone in front of it. As they've jumped out, they just rammed them. And then the police have all worked themselves. And then the Lamborghini Jeep drove off. And then they nicked me and my partner in Canary Wolf, because we had a flat in Canary Wolf. And then, yeah, took watches, phones, laptops, pants, socks, everything in the ass they took. And then proved it all and got it all back. Literally within four four weeks. It's the first time I've ever got anything back that quick in my life. Yeah, it usually takes well over sometimes over a year. Yeah. yeah. They've got a phone now. They've had <laughs> since September last year. Was that an anchor? No, it was just normal not normal iPhone. And I didn't even nothing happened, I got anything. Still ain't get my phone back. So you got everything, but do you think are you getting bugged or anything? House bugged, card bugged? Yeah, I reckon some stuff's going on, man. Some dodgy stuff. We see like dodgy cars and that now. It's just uh, blatantly like the police are up to some mischief. Because if you think you were a target then, then you're going to be a bit, bigger target now no. because you're coming into to a bit of limelight where people want your attention, everybody's speaking about you. That does, people don't like that shit, yeah, do you know what I mean? Me. Especially the screws. If you're driving about in big cars and mm. all the best of watches, they're have, going to have a beaner bonnet for 100%. you. 100%. So if they're quiet And they now, had it on before... Like, they used to ring up the um, estate agent and that. Like, as Danny paid for the house. You know, Danny Simpson's living there. Like, loads of mad stuff. Like, oh, can you have the bank account? And all, like, just crazy stuff. It's like, mate, leave me alone. If I'm not committing a crime, what's your problem? Mm-hmm. Go and nick a rapist. Go and nick a woman beater. Why are you starting on me? I'm, I'm terrorising the bad guys. Don't terrorise you. Don't, don't terrorise me, bruv. So what's your mindset like then when you're saying you're just scamming fucking bad people who's doing mm-hmm. naughty stuff? Mm-hmm. 
Is that your whole intention, just to go out? But then you'll be at the stage where nobody will want to fucking give you any work or do whatever. You say that, I can go into my phone now. Today, people like, do you want to buy this, do you want to buy that, do you want to buy this, do you want to buy that? Like, it's crazy. Like, literally, from this morning, from driving here, so I woke up at 4.30 in the morning to then go to the gym and then get ready and then come here. I've made four grand already today from literally buying a car and selling it. People just, they're just they're greedy. They see money, they want it, they want it. But you're not bumping everyone, you're doing Oh yeah, legit I do, they deals. Have to, yeah, legit deals, but they have mm-hmm. to do something to me and then they will get rumped. It's so what was the story with an 85 grand? The, um, literally, I was doing deals with this man every single day, literally for about four weeks. We was... Um, what kind of deals? Uh, just selling phones, like legit, legitimate deals. Like I was getting a good deals for phones and I was selling to him for a good price and I was nicking a nice drink. And literally every day, £30,000 or £35,000 deals come in each way. And that was every day, every single day for about four weeks. And he'd come five grand short every day. Bearing in mind, he would pay it the next day. But the next day, he'd be five or four or three grand short. So I'm always chasing him. I'm always have to go back to him. Because I'd ring him in the morning and go, are you going to clear that debt? And he goes, yeah, 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 what you got today? And I'll tell him what I got today. And he goes, yeah, 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 I'll put it on top of the money for today. And then when I go and get the money and give him the iPhones, his work will go, oh, well, I've only got, I'm four grand short. And I'm like, but that went on for four weeks. And then the last time, I just thought, do you know what? He's taking the piss, this fella. I had two literary suitcases that you've obviously seen in the pictures. I had one in the boot and one in the car. In the boot, I had the iPhones. In the, in the front of the car, I had the, some probably poor old woman's garden wall. And I, I, he rang me when his driver came all the way down from Liverpool and he said, Oh, this is, um, uh, I've got 95 grand there. I'll give you, the, I'll transfer the rest. That was meant to be 125 grand there. I'll transfer the rest on Friday. I said, what? He said, yeah, I'll transfer you the rest. I've got 95 grand there cash. I'll transfer you the rest on Friday. I said, bruv, you're taking the piss, bruv. Like, every day you're giving me Scottish money, Irish money. You're not coming, it's not one deal being proper smooth. And I thought, no problem. I've got a bag at the back. I give him the bricks and I said on your way mate have a good day that was literally it I said he went yeah I've got a long journey back to Liverpool I said yeah yeah, yeah have a good journey when did you get the phone call um in the morning about 10 o'clock in the morning what was that like <laughs> um so I got a phone call saying everything's sweet like there's no problems then I got another phone call saying oh you've done him and I said yeah Oh, no, no, don't say you've done him. Don't say you've done him. I said, for why? I'm not going to, I'm not Cal, I'm not going to why. Yeah, but he, he said it on the phone call before that you didn't do him. So you could just say, well, nah, the driver's done it or something like that. I said, fuck that. I'll tell him I've done him, bruv. And then, yeah, that was it. The phone call that you've heard and... And that's how it's right, yeah, that's... What about the watch you says you've done for 150 bags? Oh, that was some Liverpool kids as well. That was, that was a bit funny. They, how did that come about? They um, offered a watch and then they come down... And he's even messaged me last night, you know, and said, tell the truth. So I'm actually going to tell the truth exactly what happened. He's messaged me about the watch. I've, um, he's come down with a watch. I've got my mate to go there. My mate's gone there. He's walked straight up to him. Got in the car with a dressing gown and a PlayStation from my control in his hand. So it looked like he'd just come out of his ass. Got the watch. Walked back into the drive. Flipped the flip-flops off at the drive. Just run up the alleyway and got in the car and drove off. Simple that. You got robbed to finesse you later, Bob. How much was that for? 145 grand it was. King of Watch. I so- uh, Richard Mill, I sold that uh, Christmas Day to someone in Dubai for 135 grand. <laughs> How much do you think you've bumped off people? This year? Yeah. Uh, over half a million pounds. What? Le- easy. 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 I spend about... Pff, I spend a thousand pounds a day for my lifestyle. What's that day in Danny Simpson's life? What's, what's, what's what? a day by day? What do you do? What's your day like? Go gym. You're up early though, eh? Yeah. I don't sleep. Why sleep? I sleep when I'm dead. What are you thinking about money? No, I just... Bumping you... people. <laughs> <laughs> next scam. <laughs> next scam. Next, next finesse. Um, no, I just... I don't know. I just can't... Sleep for what? Why are you sleeping? There's money to be made. There's life to be lived. Why am I sleeping? What about the video of people saying your dad get killed? Oh, that's just... That's just... If you can't tell with these phones in this day and age that that is from 1992... I don't even know what to say. That's just ridiculous. Like, that video looks mad. Like, it don't even look in England. It, the only thing that looks legit is the man does half resemble me a bit. But other than that, nah. I wish it was my dad. 
not selling anyone to do that, but you know. So that's what, because it all came in the big package, the phone call, mm. you shouting out, you've done this, done that, the video of your dad. That's what, <laughs> then people go, have you seen this? So, so many messages. Mm. What was, how was that reaction then for you when it all went viral? Um, you thinking, fuck like, this, man, or yeah, you what thinking, the fuck is going yeah. on? Like, and I just thought, you know what? Fuck it, I don't care. I've got nothing to hide. Like, it is what it is. Ride it until the wheels fall off. Simple <laughs> as that. Do you, how do you, do you not sleep at night? Are you on edge? Because you've, I, I met you there, you've just walked down the street yourself. You've, I walked down the street, got, I literally. You've not got a care in the world. You were looking at me laughing like that. Yeah. <laughs> because I would still be wary, no matter where the fuck I go. Mm -hmm. Like, my life's good. I've not got enemies. Back in the day, yes, but I'm not, I'm always still, always on you've my You've always got to be yeah, on your toes, but... You've just, it's like you're skipping down the fucking street thinking, and I'm thinking, fuck me, because there's a lot of people about. Yeah, but I can have a tear up, so what's really, realistically, gonna happen? Like, nothing. Like, I've videoed myself live Instagram all the way here. Like, every day I video where I am, what I'm doing, what time it is, everything. Like... No one's going to do any... What are they going to do? Jump out of the car, five bods. I'm going to have a tear out of them and then it is what it is. I've got, if I've got to run a bit, I'll run a bit and do a dig and then run a bit more and it is what it is. But no one's going to... It's not 1992. Like, I don't know what more... Like, that's how I personally yeah. think. When was the last time you see on the news anything a hit? You don't. No, we're in lockdown, though. <laughs> When's it getting this? <laughs> Everybody's no. in the house with when a mask When you go STK when it opens, you're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> How do you... Have you ever had a hit out in your life? Yeah, my whole life. Dad had my warnings from police my whole life. What's the closest you've ever came to death? 2011. What happened? The bullet at the headrest. <sighs> like, literally. Like, no joke. It the headrest. After it happened, we pulled over. We was like, where the fuck's that? And we was looking around the car, looking for the bullet. And then, bro, my brother turned and went, it's there. And I said, where? He went, in your fucking headrest, mate. So we was in a warrior Jeep and it come through the back cab window, through that back, back passenger window, and then jammed in my headrest. 2011, January, I remember it clear as day. Do you feel lucky to be alive still? No, same again. God knows myself by day, and it is what it is. Mm -hmm. it's just my day will come one day, and it just it is what it is. You started doing the MMA. Did you get a video? Was it on YouTube? The video yeah. of your fight. How did you get into that? Um, what age? I've really been fighting my whole life, like literally from field fights to fighting in the parks to fighting outside schools as kids do. Um, but yeah, and I was like the artist in my like age group, and I used to go around and fight the other artist kids. And, that's literally it, basically, yeah. And what gym did you go to? Um, what training? Yeah. I used to go to Semtex, and then it was in Swanley, and then they moved it to Welling, and then, yeah, just always go yeah, just go Semtex. Do you still train? Yeah, I still train, but... Do you like a tear-up? Yeah, I do like a tear-up. Do you? But I like getting hit. Mm -hmm. It's not good when you're not getting hit. How are you getting on with drinking that? Because um, I've seen videos of you walking out off sales with fucking... <laughs> bags and bags of booze. Oh, that was the other day, wasn't it? I yeah. fucking... I just went on a mad... Like, I don't know, it's my mate's birthday. And I just thought, fuck this, I want to get lagging, bro. And I ain't, I don't even like drink. And I just thought, fuck it. I went in the corner shop and I said, all them bottles. And the man's gone, what are you doing with all this? I said, I'm going to have a party. He said, you can't have a party, it's locked down. I said, I'm fucking having a party, mate. And he says, what? You can't do this, though. And I'm walking out of like 600 pounds of vodka from a corner shop. Got in the car, my mate went, what the fuck are you doing? I went, you see tonight, bro. And then yeah, that was it. Do you think that was a bit of an escape though because of all the pressure that's been coming through social media over the last few weeks? Yeah, do you know what it could be, you know? Like, I never even thought about it. I just thought, I want to have a drink, let my hair down and just uh, have a yeah, chilled one on my mate. Yeah. And we did. We had a like, like, nice nice time. How long were you on it for? Um, two days. Yeah, because I've seen the kitchen counting on shit as well, you know, <laughs> doing your videos. Did you ever look back? Did you, see the sick, did you see the bar? <laughs> you know, oh, wait, is that you? It was sick. <laughs> yeah. oh, and then I go to the video. I go, I'm going to Liverpool in the morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I so, probably would have got beat up by a little kid in Liverpool at that state. <laughs> it's um, because it does affect you, doesn't it? Though? Yeah, like, all, the, all the bullshit and all the fake attention. And Do you think the screws will be watching you close just now with a magnifying glass? The who? The police. Police? Yeah, yeah definitely. 100%. Like, we got pulled over before this. We got pulled over every day. 
I'm not. This is not a drive every single day. I've got four, three, three Range Rovers, a, a RS5, and a Golf. Like every day, if them cars on the road, if I borrowed it to a mate or anything, all the videos are there. They'd get ripped out every time. Every time, them cars went down the motorway. One car couldn't even go one turn off on the motorway without ten police cars pulling over. It's it was crazy, and now all of a sudden, nothing. What about Lee Murray? I know he was mentioned in one of your interviews. Yeah. How's, what's your connection with him? Yeah, like family, like literally. Yeah? Yeah. Is he getting out, Lee? Um, hopefully, if the King pardons him, he's coming up, so fingers crossed. Is he in Morocco? Yeah, Morocco. What's that so, mean? message to the King, hopefully, free Lee Murray. Yeah? <laughs> he's, yeah if he watches this. <laughs> no doubt he will, mate. It's Morocco, <laughs> mate. <laughs> I don't know, you're famous. <laughs> it's, um, so, going through it all then. Where do you, what's your plans then? Are you trying to keep your head above water? Are you just going to keep doing what you're doing and not yeah. giving a fuck? Or yeah. um, are you going to make some changes? I've made, made changes, i.e. going legit. Like, so I've opened a few businesses and just, yeah, just keep on doing me. Why am I going to change? I'm when me. you say go legit, what kind of stuff do you do? What is it you do, actually? I actually do that, sell watches, sell cars, anything that makes a profit. Like, so say for example, you run me up and you went, oh, Danny, I want to sell my car. My mum's got a car for sale, like, can you, I ain't selling fuck all you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't selling <laughs> shit, mate. <laughs> 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 Instagram live saying I've just fucked him for 15 grand. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, literally, and if I can ring someone and then they, I could sell it before I buy it, then I'll, no problem, I'll come buy it off you and then sell it to them. And What's the biggest them? turnover you've done without fucking someone over? Them, them, that four weeks, them 30, 25 grand a day. That was ridiculous. Just I, so much money, I didn't always put it. You can give it to me, bro. Just imagine <laughs> 20 grand plus a day. Mm-hmm. It was ridiculous. Like, there's a video. I've got the video as well. That's on my Instagram. I'm driving along. I had £75,000 on me. Somebody told me, get out the car now. Get Stop the car. Get out. I didn't see no police. I drove from Peckham to Crayford. I only had to go to Dartford, which is... Two roads away. Saying, so get out of the car now. Stop the car. Said to my partner, call an Uber. She went on the phone. She went, oh, it's not working. I went, what do you mean it's not working? She went, oh, let me get my sister to do it. So she got, I said, I ain't going nowhere unless I'm in an Uber. So she got me an Uber. I got in the car. We come out of that road. Now, I'm in an Uber. She's in the Range Rover. We come out of that road. We went right. Police turned straight round on her. Pulled her over. I'm videoing it. Like, oh, my God. And I opened the box. 75 grand. I went... She's getting pulled over. Like, it would have been, the, I would have lost everything. Like, literally. Get nicked with money. What are you getting done for? Money laundering. Proceeds are crime. I would have lost my watch, my watch, her watch. The car we was in was paid out, right? I would have lost a lot of money that day. So if you're doing that, though, because on your videos now, the last few weeks, you've got big bags of money. Yeah. So then that not become a target? Is, is that you not just dangling a car in front of the car? Yeah, place? damn right. It's legit now. So what are you going to do? How legit? Um, yeah, like that big bags of money is watches sold. Like, that's not robberies or nothing like that. There's nothing that we can really do. Yeah. Uh, like, they're big boy watches, like, sold, like, and just don't drink. If you're looking back at your life for the last 10 years, would you change anything? No, I'd not change a thing. That's what makes me who I am today. Like, I'm real to myself. Do not change a thing. What about the your boys you work with? Do they think, fuck me, man, rain it in a bit? <laughs> a bit probably but they don't message me as much and ring me as much mm-hmm. but um, no nah, my brother and that, like my mates and my brothers so no nah, they don't give a fuck they just, just look like it is what it is ride the wheels until it falls off there'll be someone different tomorrow will be talking about it just see where it goes I noticed, I noticed you spoke about a winner from Love Island mm. you seem to be quite disappointed in yeah, proper the disappointed. way you've been treated by someone who mm. you think you've been there with what yeah. was that story um Literally, like I've been, like I, like I said, my mates and my brothers. So I was there for him, there for him, there for him, there for him, and like like you should be. Do you know what I mean? And then I got beat up one day by the police. Literally, like grabbing by the throat, I had handcuffs on, his grabbing by the throat, throwing in a bush, doing a hell lot of stuff, like hitting me, kneeing me, stamping on me, like tape, like got the taser out, and then he was at me and went, "Oh, that's a fucking liberty, mate. I can't believe it. That's made that's made me nearly cry. I feel sick." I went, put on your Instagram. You've got a million followers. Someone will see that who's high up and be like, they can't do that. Tell them to message me and we'll put in a complaint or whatever. He went to me, I can't put it on my Instagram. I said, why not? He went, 
oh, oh, you know, like everything you do, I support, but that, that's just a bit crazy. I went, but you've WhatsApped me saying that. So if you're not gonna, if you're gonna WhatsApp me, but you're not gonna post it, you're not real. You're fake, you're like the rest of Instagram, the rest of the world, like you're not real. If you're not gonna say the real shit, you're just gonna post the fake shit, you're fake. And then he, and then a couple of weeks later, I said, post my T-shirts, the, um, you'll do nothing. And then he went, oh, uh, I've got to deal with McCoy's and uh, I can't post them for six, two hours. I went, you know what, go fuck yourself. He went, what? He went, that's a bit strong, Dan. I went, no, it's not strong. And he went, brother, everything I, I, I've done for you, uh, uh, uh. I went, oh, so we're now saying favours for favours. If that's what we're saying, cool. Every favour you've done for me, it's cost you not one penny. Every favour I've done for you, i.e. borrowed you a car for four weeks, brand new from a showroom, went and bought it, give you it. For four weeks, you bought it back. You didn't even bring it back to me. You got your dad to bring it back to me because you were, you were embarrassed with yourself because you, sm you reversed it into something and you ripped the whole side off. You took the piss. So every time, and every time I've done favours for you, it's cost me money. Every time you've done favours for me, it's cost you nothing. So yeah, I was proper, proper disappointed. And if I, was, if I wasn't, I was still talking to him, I wouldn't be saying this now because it's obviously mugging him off, but... Yeah, do you get this happened easy? Yeah, bad. I'm 100%. If you give me 100%, I'll give her 100%. You give me 80%, um, I'm like a bitch. My, bro my brother's got a name for me. He calls me Sarah. <laughs> I swear to God. That's my name with my mates. Like, if I oh, Simpson acts like Sarah again. Like, the other week, I went on Instagram, I was fuming. I was trying to unfollow everyone, and it was taking ages. And I literally got to about 200, and Instagram went, you're blocked from doing any more activities today. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I have my bitch moments, like, once a month. I'll How would you feel if somebody done the same to you? 100 bags, watch, took a watch off you. What would your reaction be? The way I wouldn't be able to physically take it because you've got to kill me. But, um, I don't know. Yeah, you'd be pissed, wouldn't you? Jesus. How would you laugh and go, well? Yeah, it, like, my saying is, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Like, calm as a bitch. So if it happens, you just got to laugh and go, Pfft. it is. But obviously, you'd be upset. Have you ever been shafted? <laughs> no. Nah. Never. I'm too, I'm too on it for that. If that makes sense, I know when someone's acting dodgy, because they're not, they don't act them normal selves. So no, no, I've never been. I'll oh, tell you a lie. I did actually get shafted once. For, I was in jail and a kid rung me up, and he started sending me a picture of his kids and his family, and he does, he does all rapping and that. And he was like, oh, please help me, please help me. I was like, yeah, sweet, no problem. He, I was like, what do you, what do you need? Because I did actually like the kid, and he was like. Oh, I just need like seven hundred pounds, and I could flip it, and I could pay for this. And but I said, no problem. I was in prison. I said, I'll give him seven hundred. I've never spoke to the kid since. Literally never spoke. And I just laugh, like really, like all right, cool. You start sending me pictures of your kids, your missus, saying you need. I built you, and then two years still down the line. You, yeah, but it is what it is. I know you've got, you've, you've got kids yourself. You got a son. Yeah, yeah, little boy and little girl. How does that? Um, and one in the way as well. Congratulations. It's free, mate. Oh. Fuck's sake, you better start getting the sticky fingers on again, mate. You've got a lot of mouths to feed. <laughs> um, how does that then, does that not trigger your mind as well to go, right, wait a minute? Because anybody who I've ever grew up to had that mentality always ends up, does always end up yeah. coming to get them, no matter if it's five years, ten years, yeah, thirty course. years. Does that not think, right, wait a minute? Because you're still young, you're only mm. 31. Yeah. You're at that age, you're at that crossroads, it's either you go... 100% legit or mm. you just go fucking fuck it wow fully fuck it mentality yeah. that is a very that I'm is like the in the middle yeah I always have that fuck it mentality but I've, my brain's going to this side like you want to I want to go legit like even before this I was off trying to do it trying, even like a couple of years ago I started a rental company I had like a few nice bad boy cars and started renting them out and trying to go the legit route and then Everyone was obviously smashing them up because you know what you're doing rentals, you know what I mean? Who <laughs> smashing them up? Just everyone renting them out. Jesus Christ, I see the M3 go down the motorway like 165 mile hour. I'm ringing a kid like, oh, I'm going to fucking kill you, mate. Like, you brother fucking slow down. Mm -hmm. Then the last draw was literally I rented that to my mate. And then he said he hit a curb, just to hit a curb. I said, all right. And then the police turned up and took the car off him. Because I was giving it to police officers down the phone, I basically said, fuck off. Like, even, oh, are you the owner of the car? I said, yeah. I said, mate, get up, go away. You, you hit the curb, you ain't done anything wrong, fuck off. And then he seized the car, and I picked up the car from the next day from the impound. And my, bearing in mind, my mate said he just hit, hit the curb. Oh my life, the wheel was hanging off the vehicle. And that was it. I said, no more, never again, man. Too much asshole. Yeah, I love carts. Like, cars are my thing. Like, I love carts, but. 
yeah, no one's doing that to my base no more. What you got? No Range Rovers? Ra- uh, yeah, SVR. Um, the, the, the Range Rover we pulled up in there. Then another Range Rover. Um, RS5 and a Golf. If you were to go legit, what would you do? Um, I'm doing it. I've got a letting business now, mm-hmm. letting houses out. And um, I was just opening up. Well, I, didn't, I ain't opened up yet. Just bought a shop yesterday and doing um, just food, like um, bagels and things like that. Down in Margate. There we go. Do you know what I mean? The easy life. Easy life. Do you life. think, though, because it does become a buzz, anybody that's done robberies mm. or turns, you know oh, yourself, it's buzzing it's a fucking buzzing. You can't beat that buzz. So, from 2013, I didn't know where to turn from them on robberies because the buzz is just, you don't get nothing better than going out in your good clothes and putting that belly on and putting them plates on and just going to work. That buzz is just on a different level. So that's how for anybody that's thinking through change, that is difficult because it's the adrenaline kick, it's this, this, the feeling of power that you've got over other people. 100%. Oh, that goes, what you going to lost. Go your that's shop, what I was, I was Sell lost. your bagels and you'll be thinking, like, fuck me, it's the boring life, but an easy, it is an easier life. 100%. But I've come kid. to the motto now nah, is, all right, all them times I spent in jail, if I went and got a job in Asda's, in binman a, a normal painter and decorator plaster i would earn miles more than i did for that prison sentence so what would i rather do not go to prison and have more money or go to prison just for that little buzz there and then i'd rather go to work yeah because it's your time's precious man that's the most valuable currency exactly on that. the planet I believe it's just your time. You can't, money can't buy time. You like, can like, go out and do tons, five million, ten million, do whatever the fuck you want, but if one, you're doing a five stretch or a ten stretch, not only nothing, you got a new on. baby on the kit way, and yeah, that's the time that you miss. So that's where you'll be at the crossroads and thinking, right, what the fuck they're doing? It's all fun and games and people loving these stories mm. and that, but when you break it all down, it is, a, it is all bullshit. 100%. Like, because it's the, the people who you, it's surrounded by you, who care mm. by you, that worry it for yeah. you, yeah, and it, do you ever worry that, that that happens, that you might not become the target, but the other people around you? Nah, because who's really, who's really going to do something like that? Do you know what I mean? Like, no, like, you would have to be some sick motherfucker to do something like that. I just couldn't imagine it. But if they did, bro, they better do me as well, because I will do everyone to their dog, their nan, the lot, and I will find them. Like, they would not be, they would never get away with that, ever. I'll make it my life mission. Do you choose your targets as well if you know you're going to take something off someone? No, I'd, like, they have to do something wrong to me. I don't just randomly go, oh, I'm going to do you. I'm just literally doing business. And then when you come off that straight road and you start being a bit sidewards, I'll completely come off the road. So it's never affected you, like people phoning up, wanting stuff, done this because of all the videos? People wanting what? But it's never affected people still wanting to do business no. because of the videos? It's like I've got more business. That's fucked up. I'm mad, it? isn't it? I wouldn't do business with a cunt like me. So if you do fuck them over, it's just a case of, look, there's a video, mate. You, you, you know who he was dealing with. You deserve with. to. It's even it. the same as this geezer now that I've done. He knew who I was. Like, this is what he's going around saying now. He's saying, like, look, it wasn't that people's money. I did um, just say the name to scare you. Um, and basically just saying the same shit. Like, oh, like, he just, he just, he knew about me. He asked about me. Everyone told him that I was a bad guy. And he just fucked up. He just he was borrowing money from different people to pay for this stuff because he could earn a drink. And yeah, he just he's obviously disappointing himself. Your mental health now, how is that? Because I know you've battled with it. I feel like I'm getting. I'm. I'm I've got. I've got back. Like over the weekend. Or the weekend Did was. Did you struggle after the session? <laughs> yeah, bad. <laughs> I probably had a nervous breakdown Sunday. I think. Like Fine. proper. Yeah, bad. <laughs> well, that's just all the that's everything catching up with you as well oh, no. like, you can say the fuck it and you'll do nothing all that yeah. shit but the human beings were sensitive fuckers 100% you know I mean? I'm, not, I'm a man I, I don't have no shame in saying I cry or I have, you have to let it out you can't hold on to it do you know what I mean you have so, to just have you ever seen a psychologist you ever spoke to anybody from yeah, you probably struggle with PTSD a bit yeah. of trauma from being a kid did you ever get beaten yeah bad I've got yeah, bad. By your dad? Yeah. Broke both my feet when I was like f- three, four. What? Yeah. <laughs> Mad shit, man. How the fuck did break your feet? Oh, with a uh, pool cue. Walloped them. Because I poked the roof and made an hole in the ceiling. But even though all the boisterous shit you're doing and all the... 
they still try, we still crave attention. So you're getting attention now. So your your dopamine levels will be through the roof. You'll be getting a a, a chemical high. Mm -hmm. where you'll be you'll be buzzing. Once it all disappears, you need to be careful because you, you need you're going to hit prop bottoms. Yeah. yeah. So, but I'm I'm not you. I'm not getting that big headed. I'm not famous. Hey, people start say you're famous, you're a legend. I'm not. I'm just me. I'm just normal me. I say hello to everyone. I message everyone back. I try and show respect to everyone that's positive. I'm just normal. I don't want to be up there. Like this is will be the last thing I do. Like I will not do no more after this. So no messages, please. No nothing. Like <laughs> you say yeah. that, but that's all. No, it ain't. Like you are the last. I've only done you because of Instagram. Mm -hmm. They wanted that. I put it up. Do you know what I mean? Not out of not respect for you, but I just thought I've said my side. But you put a post out saying you're struggling with mental health, yeah. and people still wanted you to do oh, it. No, they don't give a real. fuck about you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> they don't fucking care. I'm not. It's like, do people I do want it? drama? I oh, know because when this goes out, it's going no. But do you know what it is? Everyone tenfold. said that even the people that voted did actually message me, and it was like. Yeah, I know you struggle for mental health, but I did vote yes for you to do the James English show just because I feel like he paints a better picture. He gets at the real stories about people and their life and where they've come. Like, so yeah, I think you should do his show more than anybody. What about for any kids maybe watching that's want to be bad boys, just want to do what you do? It don't pay the bills. It doesn't pay the bills. Yes, you can go and buy a stone iron coat. Yes, you can go and buy a Rolex. Yes, you can get the newest trainers. But at the end of the day, when you're in prison... How many times can you wear them on the wing? How many times can that put food on your table for your kids? It can't. And that is the bottom line. It cannot. Go to work. Like yesterday, I was talking to my mate that has a driveway company. And I was just asking these employees, I was like, how much are you on a day? And one of them was like, 150 pounds. I said, how much are you on a day? He was like, 130 pounds. The other kid, 60 pounds. I said, so you're the lowest one. You're on 60 pounds a day. You, you're on 140. How long have you been doing it? He's like, about a year, a couple of years. You're on 130 pound a day. Like, do that. And what's that gonna make at the end of the week, end of the month, end of the year, two years, three, five years, what are you gonna have? That pays the bills. Bread and butter, every week pays the bills. Plus, the mate, but people might think that, some people post that, they'll say that, a lot, I've interviewed a lot of millionaires, mm. even a billionaire, and they struggle with mental health, so money has an illusion. Money doesn't, money, yeah. money makes you depressed. Mm -hmm. Money doesn't help. All right, you want money, so what, you, great, you get all the money, what are you gonna do with it? You don't do anything with it. Me, I've got watches, cars, when you've got it, you don't want it. It's a mad thing my brother always used to say to me, because he owns a watch company, I say to him, oh, I love that watch, love that watch. He was like, yeah, it's great, but when you got it, you don't want it. Like, it's just, money makes you depressed. And, all and you get the wrong that. attention from money. Yeah, fake attention. Bank is fake. They're not your friend. Media, yeah. fake. Money's fake, but people would either say, I'd rather be depressed than a Lamborghini and I would be, say, a Fiesta or whatever, but I it's wouldn't. not the same. You're still yeah. battling the same. Like, 100%. The life that I've created and now over the last two or three years, I would have done anything for this. Mm. But if anything, I'm battling more today than mm. I was three years ago. 100%. So it becomes difficult. That's why... I, There's no middle. Yeah. There's top, money and depressed, or there's the bottom striving and I'd rather be striving because it gives you a goal it gives you a drive every day I wake up now in the morning no joke nothing to do nothing like not, not a thing Jim that is it like there was a last week I sat indoors for three days played PlayStation from 9 o'clock in the morning till 12 o'clock at night because I had nothing to do there's no drive there's no what am I going to do get up, like get up and go when you're at the bottom you've got that goal so you're working for it, working for it, working for it. So you want to go out, you want to earn money, you want to go and be active. When you've got it, it's fucking boring, bro. It just seems that you need to maybe re-strategize and refocus. And start again. Get new goals again for the And then you year. go up again. Yeah, exactly. it's all about raising the bar. Everything's consistency. So I always use Big Tyson Fury as an example. Oh, he's a fucking legend. Yeah, man. but he'd won all the belts, had all the money, and ended exactly. up in the biggest depression of his that life. That is it. Imagine that. He'd probably been thinking that his whole life to get to there and then he was the baddest man on the planet where does he go do you know what I mean no one can fight him so it's like do I really go and train for these bums no like, no but we're all searching for that fulfillment we're all mm. searching for that sense of completion where mm. there's something missing yeah, well, so whether you're making money or getting the biggest watches or doing these tons mm. you're doing all these negative things as well mm. you, that's what they are they're still negative mm. so 
you'll be getting an adrenaline kick for a few hours, boom, crash down because you're not fulfilling it, the yeah. potential. Everybody's got massive potential. Everybody can make massive changes. You're, you're clearly got your head screwed mm. on. You're not fucking daft. Yeah, of course. But for me, looking from the outside is to re-strategize, yeah, set new goals and go, do you know what? Because you don't want to be looking back at these videos in five and ten years and going, fuck me, man, that was a fucking embarrassing. What a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you've got kids, mm -hmm. you've clearly got drive to make paper mm -hmm. you know that's not your end product yeah. if you've got a figure in your mind that you'd love to hit and then say you were out everybody does as soon as they hit it they yeah. can't get fucking out but if you've got a number or do you just want to keep doing it i just don't i, I really don't care about money like that is the god's on the truth like i have no concept of money like i just it just, it just doesn't even, even that doesn't make me happy what makes me happy is my kids smiling like people around me smiling that's what drives me that's what gives me the goal because money i don't like it makes me depressed it makes me it's just, it's just rubbish what go in a pub to spend hundreds of thousands of pounds on beer or to be the biggest chap in the club it's, just, it's fake like you said fake attention fake news fake rubbish people it's, it's not good and then the next day you wake up where are them people nowhere until you're back out doing the same again when you had your wee breakdown after your session mm. how many people phoned you to ask if you were alright not one there you go so that tells me that you need to seriously fucking get your head out your ass. Oh, no, that was um, a fucking... That hit the chest then, bro. You know what I mean, but... You've I got feel like a, crying now. No, but you've got a missus who's got a kid on the way. Yeah. It's time to level up, man. It's time to step up to the fucking plate because mm. you then people want your attention, but then you become... People don't laugh with you, they'll laugh at you. Yeah, 100%. And that's fucking scary because that's what I realised over the last three years that nobody's by your side. They all fizzle off. It's mm. not that... People say that I've changed fucking good I wanted to change I come from <laughs> yes. fucked up life I come yeah. from a life of fucking misery and addictions and pain mm -hmm. seeing murders seeing all the bullshit of the day and I pretended to be happy mm -hmm. I was always the loudest man but I was full of fucking Charlie mm -hmm. I was bang on the sniff and yet I had two <laughs> kids do you know what I mean yeah, I used cool. to get my kids past them on my mum and my sister and get a couple of photos and say I'm a great dad yeah. it's not a great dad man I was a fucking bum <laughs> do you know what I mean so it's about to find okay find your responsibilities yeah. You're still 31 and go, do you know what? Fuck this, man. I'll, I'll laugh at this and go, it is daft. Yeah. But you clear that that crossroads where, where the fuck do I go here? Exactly. Like you want to make the right decisions, but don't get sucked back in. No. Do you feel as if you've been used a lot in your life? Yeah, by, 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 by yeah. fake friends, 100%. 100%. Because they know I will go to the extreme. I will do more than the next person. Like when you said, are you scared that someone might hurt someone that you care about? Well, no, not really, because I'll go and do worse. So I've always had them friends that will just have me there to protect them, to look after them. But then when the table turn, they're, like, they're nowhere to be seen. They ain't ringing my phone. They ain't yeah. messaging me, where am I? So that tells you that fuck that. Then. Yeah, fuck that. That's what I've done. I, I, block, I went from my what, Instagram, WhatsApp, I took everyone, all of them off. Boom, I don't want to talk to you no more. Simple as that. Yeah. I'll do me I'm going to do me step back out of all this bullshit friends bullshit I'm doing me you do you what is the plans for yourself for the future moving on just to crack on have a nice happy life how do you think what makes you happy though I know your kids but everyone's smiling that is literally it I just wanna how can that make you happy when you're not smiling but I will smile if they're, if they're happy do you know what I mean like, that's literally see, it see I don't believe that I see you battling brother <laughs> I see you fucking battling and I know you're trying to make the changes because I know this is all this even the shit that I do it's all a mask yeah. it's all bullshit man yeah. like I, I was all, you're trying to make me cry no but I was, I was with someone and they says why they says, why are you doing what you do James and I drained off so many different things I was fucking bang on it I'm confident I can mm. make changes I'm helping people and he says no he says listen why are you doing it mm. he says relax he says look at you getting fidgety when I even asked that question I says I don't know what you mean he says you know what think about it and it took us about a week and I, I was in my bed and I was thinking about it. The reason why I do this is because I don't feel good enough. No. I don't feel good enough. I feel as if I can pull the, the wool over people's eyes that I'm doing something for my life even though I'm still battling. That's why after this interview, I've got another one after this, but I'm coming off social media for six weeks yeah. just, just to just kind to of recharge, recharge and refocus because so I feel as much. if I'm self-seeking. I'll post a wee photo. See if I'm feeling it. I'll bang a photo on. Give me attention. Yeah. All the birds. Even fucking guys, whatever, just, oh, you're doing amazing. You're mm. great. Strokes my ego. After two hours, mate, I feel, fuck am I doing? I'm still, I'm back to battling again. Yeah, 100%. So I know it's fake. So for me, I'll be coming off social media. Mm. I want to sound like a fucking psychologist or a, a therapist, but 
You're clearly a decent guy. No, it's good to hear that other people go through the same shit. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? We're all battling, man. 100%. And I crave that, right, we'll, we'll get money, we'll do this, and I'll get this attention. I used to think, right, if I get 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, it's, I've got a show, <laughs> then I, I hit 100,000. And I remember in my bed that night when I, hit, I was lying next to a bird and... I, I, was re- <laughs> I was refreshing because it was like nine nine fucking and then as soon as I had the hundred thousand I felt fuck all I felt nothing nothing, nothing changed nothing it's crazy so it same as me for when I had five thousand to now I've got thirty thousand it's the same but now it's just all they're all fake <laughs> it's literally <laughs> it. bigger depression like some, bro, literally but just be careful with the booze and all the other shit because mm. I don't really even drink. Like, that was just a... I don't know. I've but that tells me that you were, you needed a blowout. Yeah, well, That's bad. the wrong sort of blowout because mm. then it's... The next two or three weeks, you're still hazy. Mm. You're fine after four or five days. But I had a guy on who sp- speaks about Charlie and the cocaine and shit like that. And your neurons, the, the neurons in your brain and like the dopamine levels don't go back down to three to six months later. Mm. So I don't do drugs. I've never done a drug in my life. Still, yeah, but for anybody watching, yeah. it fucks with your shit. I oh, know, it's crazy. Do you know what I mean? I've seen like, proper mates on drugs and it's not a good sight at all. Would you ever go and speak to somebody? What about my life? Yeah, 100%. Shit? I think you, people have to, do you know what I mean? See, I say that as well, but when I when I come off this shit for six weeks, I'm actually going to see somebody for the first time. Yeah. See, I don't trust anybody. So I think if I go and speak to them, I'll think they'll go and tell somebody and they'll be sitting in the house laughing at me. No. That's just my insecurity. Yeah, no, don't no trust way. Anyone. I seen before, like this woman before, she was unbelievable. But obviously that was through probation. So I don't know, wouldn't know how to basically go down that route to see her again. But it wasn't like how you see it on TV and thing when you're sitting in a room and it's all awkward and you've got to just basically blow out everything. It was nice. It was calm. What she was asking and we were just having a chat. And then, yeah, it was just banging. And I just was, every Wednesday, can to go back there. Like, oh, I want to go and see that woman today. And do you think you've ever had anybody that understands you, that you could speak to without the whole circus around it? No, not really. Like, yeah, my partner, but other than it's that... It's not the no, same, though, yeah, is it? Because you kind of still hold back, don't we? Yeah, literally. You don't really let... You don't talk how you talk when you talk to them, kind yeah. of... I don't know how it is. They just say words and then you're just like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you open up, don't you, mate? <laughs> about 10 <laughs> line sentences, <laughs> mate. Fucking people had an ear in there. <laughs> Literally. You, you, if that was recorded, you would end up in prison. <laughs> but this is what tells me as well, because I've went to see like one, I've went to see a few and I've only ever seen them once. Because I'm like that, you just open up. It's like, you've got all this shit locked in. Mm. You always want to get it out, but you can't trust anybody. Yeah. But as soon as you see it, then you go, fuck that, I'm not going And even when now. you're talking to someone else, you're always off, showing off, off, trying to boost yourself up. But with that person, you are really ain't. You're just being normal. And then, yeah, just, uh, you walk out and you're like, yeah. it's the maddest feeling. It's like a buzz going to a crime. You walk out and you're like, yes. Natural. That, that, wow. Yeah. Mate, I'm up mountains sitting in fucking ice. So am I just to reconnect and get the natural chemicals. Mm. So I don't drink anymore. I'm not right. taking gear. I'm fucking bang on it. But I'm battling yeah. every fucking yeah. day. So that tells me that something still ain't fucking right. Like, mm. No matter how many views I get, how many guests I get, I crave, I, I crave that. Mm. So I don't know if this is becoming an obsession, mm. an addiction, but I've replaced every other fucking addiction to then being the biggest and the best. I've achieved that. Listen, I'm going to take over. I'm taking this shit around the globe. You know what yeah, I mean? Good. But I need to be careful that... I Bloody hell, the way my Instagram fucking got sent your name about a million times, I was like, fucking hell, who is he, bro? Yeah. Probably the same way you, freaking, mm. who the fuck is this little <laughs> cunt? But it's just crazy, like, and then when I looked, I was like, Jesus Christ, you are actually proper famous. Like, I was like, mate, he's sick. And then I watched that one, Darren Till, and yeah, I was Dan's like... Dan's a legend. Yeah, man. he was he's fucking sick. Bastard. I was like, wow, like, yeah, he's proper. I was mm. like, yeah, I've got to do it. But that's a good platform And then he was, it was on Sunday that I decided, when I had the breakdown... And I watched that you and Darren Till one. And I was like, yeah, I've got to do it. Fuck it, I'm doing it. How do you feel after today with it? Yeah, I feel, I feel, yeah, I feel like I've had one of them meetings. <laughs> 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 Literally, yeah. yeah. But everything happens for a reason. Like, I don't 100%. give a fuck people's backgrounds. I don't care what their no, story is. That's the same as me. I don't do care what I mean? your name like, is, what your story is. It is, what it is I'll is. judge people from the day I meet them. 100%. Like. And no one's met me to this day that don't actually like me. Yeah, so I've met... Um, I interviewed fucking, fucking murderers and mm. bank robbers and I've interviewed inspirational people. But even the inspirational people went through some sort of misery well, and caused a lot has. of harm in their mm. past. 
Like, I can only judge people from now. Mm. I can only judge you from now, from speaking mm. to you, from skipping down the street. I don't know. You're a big <laughs> fucking happy chap. Eh? <laughs> to then understanding you a bit more, your dad breaking mm. your feet in and out of fucking prison. It's like you're a, it's like a lost soul as well, isn't it? Mm. Like you're, we're constantly searching. We're yeah, kind of looking for answers. But you you don't get your answers for anybody watching. You never get your answers through fame, money, attention, if anything that makes you fucking worse. More, yeah, more yeah. depressed, one hundred percent. So what you what you're going to do then? I know we spoke going forward, but for you mentally, yeah. pushing forward for the future. I do think I need to see someone after Sunday's tournament. I do like there's no if spots that maybe that spot. So I will search to. I will try and get back in touch with that a woman that I used to see. So I will go to where the centre I used to see her at and say, look, I used to see someone here. Is there any chance I could do it privately? Like, It's funny though, it's always at our breaking points we always have that realisation oh, moment. Oh, it's like it's took too long. It's took too late to get to that point. Nah, you're only 31. I'm yeah. fucking 36, man. <laughs> you look about 26. Nah, fl- <laughs> flirting now. So that fucking ice waters, mate, I've been getting. Yeah, but going forward then, yeah, get it done, man, and, yeah. and change, and you'll see things differently. Just be careful with the social media kind of things. I don't even let that get to me. Like, that's just... But it that's still plays a, yeah. a, a massive effect. It's a, you're reading everybody's comments, so your brain absorbs everything, yeah, no. no matter if it's negative it's like or positive. Computer. It just... You, how are you dealing with... you getting trolls as well, I'd yeah, imagine. Yeah, Jesus Christ. What are they saying? I just had someone a minute ago say, you, you, you always got the same coat on. <laughs> I said, are you fucking blind? It's a body woman, you donut. Like, mm. it's not... Oh. It's divs it's just literally they're fake and you look at their Instagram it's like 301 underscore 926 it's like you look at them and they've got no followers no pictures no nothing you're like mate get yeah, a life. people just make up accounts to just do, do that, that message <laughs> it can throw you off your day mm. the every... I, no it don't it don't I honestly I laugh because I think you've just took your time out of your day to support your family your kids to make an Instagram or a YouTube account and put a fake message out there Go and do something positive for your life, for your kids, for your family. Even if you ain't got kids, go and do something positive for you. Like, why are you making an Instagram that you could go and earn money doing something good to do a message that you didn't make? No money. What do you think, looking back now, or the videos, if you had the choice not to have them out or have them out, what would you have? I never put them out, so... Yeah. Uh, like, I, will, I wouldn't give a shit. It is what it is, isn't it? I don't know, fuck it, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, kind yeah, of ride the wave yeah, to yeah, it. It's like, no, it is what it is. And so for any kid, for anybody watching, anybody that's battling or struggling, what advice would you give for them? I always talk, always. At least if, even if you send a message to one person and just say, boom, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm having a bad day. You ain't got to say I'm struggling, I'm crying, I'm, I'm this, whatever, like to make yourself muggy, just at least say, oh, I'm having a bad day today. And just put it out there. Just talk. Talking, don't never keep it in. Because you keep it in, it will get worse and worse and worse. Build it up, build it up. And you will end up breaking, no matter how strong you think you are. I.e. Tyson Fury, strongest man, baddest man on the planet. In my eyes, you can't, like, he had it. If he can have it, we can all have it. Yeah, everybody's like, got a breaking point. Exactly that. Talk about it. Let it out. That's my message. Talk. Let it out. When's the baby due? Uh, April. Fuck's sake, Danny, man, that's soon, man. And I, I mean, they were, you had a sex, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's close, oh. mate, but new baby coming, new chapter of your life. This one's done. Now it's trying to get the slate clean and just fucking kick on. Oh, yeah, well, sure. You've got everything materialistic that everybody would probably dream of. You'd have probably dreamed of this life. But they would put their foot in my shoes for 10, one day. 15 years ago. Uh, and for the police officers that are watching this, no doubt they'll be scrutinising this and picking it over the shit. But... You're clearly a good guy. You're all right, man. Mm. Just be careful. Um, um, I'll care. be keeping an eye on you as well, mate. Don't worry about <laughs> Danny, that. stop doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Shaking my head from behind the screen. And going, he ain't never going to fucking change. <laughs> <laughs> but for coming on today, Danny, listen and telling oh, your story, you I genuinely appreciate it. Right. In my best. eyes, my story is it's nothing. It's just normal. But uh, People know him, mate. Uh, People exactly just that. want to hear shit. And they are fucking shit. loving it, yeah, aren't they? Jesus so, Christ. Listen, mate, I'm all about getting people on hearing their story everybody asked for it they've got it yeah. here we are fuckers not mean so thank you very much yeah listen all the best for the future YouTube, brother. Cheers, brother. check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast thank you